You know, hey, good afternoon. I appreciate everybody coming by. Uh, had a normal Wednesday practice, worked on our third down things. Uh, got some goal line looks in, got some speed against the defense. They got some speed against us, running some uh, opponent stuff, servicing each other. It wasn't perfect, but uh, I think it was a good practice. Um, you know, working on their blitzes and working on their, their various looks that they're, they're going to give the defense uh, with their offense. And of course, we did special teams. So with that, I'll open it up to questions. We didn't see Leonte out here uh, practice. Uh, was he been around the team at all today? There'll be a st- to answer your question, no. And two, there'll be a statement uh, about Leonte's status uh, later today. Are you, are you hopeful he plays Saturday? Depending on his status, uh, we'd have to see where he's at. If his status should change, we'd have to see where he's at if he actually came out and practiced with us. Coach, there's been a lack of a vertical passing game, especially since Norfolk State. Have you guys implemented any wrinkles this week to make sure that you keep Michigan State honest defensively, especially with such a good secondary? I won't say that there's been a lack of a vertical passing game. I'd say that we've, we've caused some throws down the field. Uh, if the quarterback sees someone underneath and takes it, then we're, we're happy with the completion if it, it's going to help us move the change. Chains, I'm sorry. Um, we have Coach McDaniels and, and the rest of the offensive staff that put together a plan we think is best for us to take advantage of what Michigan State does on defense, and there are some vertical throws in that plan. No, it's a little bit of a hypothetical, but would two days be enough practice for Leonte to play on Saturday? I'm not commenting on Mr. Carew. Anybody? Coach, what's it been like now for your third week? with these duties, you know, addressing the media and stuff like that? Well, I say this, you all been very good to me. You've been nice, you've been cordial, you've asked good questions, and uh, I, I appreciate that. And I, and you've done honest reporting, and I can't ask for anything more than that. So does that mean you're going to miss us? <laughs> I didn't, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Is it nice to get uh, Juwan Harris back out there? I know it's when- nice, yes. You know what? And. Juwan's a good kid. He's a first semester freshman. And you know, sometimes when you're a coach, you want him to know everything you know. When we do it 14 hours a day, he's doing it four hours a day, and he missed, I don't know, a couple, four or five weeks. Um, Great kid, great ability. And if we can just get him to learn a few things and and be able to help us, that'd be fantastic. But I think he's got a real bright future ahead of him. How about Charles Norway? The same kind of thing. He's back in the mix now. Charles Norway's back. He's he's, uh, he's on a, a, a limited status. So right now he hasn't been able to jump in the mix and, and help the defense, but he's doing some things to help him get better as a player, being able to go through the individual drills and things of that nature. Do you think that move to defense will be permanent? Uh, you never know. I, I try not to speak in absolutes. Charles is a, an excellent player. Uh, he can help us on either side of the ball and in special teams. Whatever Coach Flood thinks his best, his best situation to help the team is what will happen. Any other questions, guys? Coach, can you talk about the pass defense against especially Cook, one of the best passers in the Big Ten, a very potent passing attack? Well, they're, they're good up front, so they do a good job protecting Cook. And Cook's a very good quarterback that can fit the balls into tight spaces. So Coach Rossi and, and Coach Wilson are going to have to do and are going to do a good job uh, just making sure the guys read their keys and stay in the zones they're supposed to be in. And if we're playing man coverage, be able to guard the man and be able to uh, make the the throw is contested throws, and hopefully we come up with a few. You think the secondary's gotten better every week? I do. I think they've gotten better. Uh, the young guys on the outside are learning on the run, and running, they, and they keep getting more information. The more reps they get in games, and the more reps they get in practices, and that we're doing. Those two guys are doing a good job coaching the back half. I think I remember you saying uh, Kansas week that Joe Rossi was like drawing up crazy things to get to the Kansas quarterback to get more pressure. That he was spending time drawing up. Do you have to get more aggressive with Michigan State? Can you keep some of those things? All right, don't, don't misquote me. I said he's in there working on trying to get some sacks. Yeah. Uh, but whatever, whatever Joe Rossi and the defensive staff comes up with, they're going to come up with sound schemes, things that they think are best to, to apply pressure to the quarterback or to, to the contested throws and, and, and to interrupt the passing lane. So I'm sure he and uh, Coach Frazier and Coach Wilson and Coach Panagos have some things together they think going to help put our best foot forward. 
A lot is made of how they play the press coverage a lot on the outside. Just just generally, what does that do as far as like posing a challenge to the, the passing game? What the receivers have to do a good job getting off the line of scrimmage. They have to be able to see the press. It means that their defensive coordinator, and their, their defensive back coach, they're, they're confident that these guys have the ability to, to hold it down one-on-one -on -one outside. And we have to beat them, and we have to do a good job. We have to do a good job beating them and not just getting jammed at the line, and that's going to disrupt the timing route. So Coach uh, Campanelli, does a great job. He's repping that every day, getting off press and getting back into the rat step. You guys ran the ball really well against Kansas. Michigan State last year was a game where you guys didn't run the ball as well. Is that is their defense particularly stat against that? I mean, obviously they have a great secondary. How about the way they play the run defense? They're very good against the run. They got two tackles on the inside. They're very good players. Uh, the two ends on the outside are, are, are not a step down from the inside guys and the linebackers. Uh, they play downhill and they attack the run and they, they tear offensive lineman off a double team so the defensive line is clear to, to shed and get off blocks. They're well coached up front and our offensive line and, and, and our running backs and tight ends are gonna have to do it gonna have to step up and fight and push and make and move a guy against his will. How much do you think the success in the running game against Kansas helped you know Chris have a, you know a better game? I think it helped a bunch because when you can run the football and a, a defense can't be one dimensional and just line up and come after the quarterback and you also want to have a great running game to, to support your, your passing game. So we're looking, we're hoping to have that again this Saturday. Two more questions. Two more questions. Two more questions. Thanks, no guys. more questions. All right. Thank you. Gentlemen, be blessed.